<sighs> okay. We're doing this. I don't want to, but fuck me, I guess, so we're doing this. Saying, let's start with the good, is almost comical. And you'll see why in about 60 seconds. But starting with the good, it works. It technically works. I know this might sound reminiscent of the Diablo 4 review, in that one of the biggest hurdles was just working at launch compared to its predecessor, but that's true multiple times over for Bethesda. Because Bethesda. This is maybe the first time in almost 20 years that Bethesda released a game that technically works at launch. Although before you get too impressed, there are some caveats we'll get into later. But fuck it, it works. If I gotta find something nice to say, this is it. It technically works. I never ran into any real bugs, which is kind of unheard of because Bethesda. And as surreal as it is to say this, that means Starfield has less bugs than the last Naughty Dog game did at launch. Which is kind of crazy to even hear myself say out loud. It's like we're living in the upside down. And that's it for the good. <laughs> that's it. That's all, folks. It's all downhill from here. Strap in, bitches. This is going to be a long one. The opening hours, or prologue, are almost daring me to have fun. It amounts to go here, talk and do nothing, go here, talk and do nothing. So you can go back into orbit, so you can go back to your star map, so you can land somewhere else, talk to someone, get back to your ship, go back to your star map, so you can land somewhere else, before doing anything that would resemble a fucking game. It's like the last one. I'm gonna be honest, if I wasn't reviewing this, I'd never have gotten past the prologue, which is about the first three to four hours. After that, everything just felt like pulling teeth. I did it because I had to, not because I wanted to. I'm not gonna get into much story or plot details. It amounts to finding artifacts, uncover a cosmic mystery, which could be anywhere from interesting to who cares based on who's writing it. And Bethesda's writing it. So my ability to care was never found. Because Bethesda. But regardless of story, the characters and NPCs are really what we should talk about. Because in games like this, that's often what matters more than the overarching story. And they amount to another pile of who gives a fuck. From the get-go, everyone is kind of oddly nice to you. Oddly trusting and complimentary, even though you've done nothing to earn it. It's really good to have you with us. Everyone just kind of thinks the best of you off the bat and starts giving you shit like a ship, a robot, a place at the main base. So much. Where everyone lives in this weird lodge with two hallway entrances for each bedroom and only one communal bathroom with no shower. Beyond that, every NPC is just as plastic, stiff, and awkward as any Bethesda game. Lacking even the charm of some previous Bethesda companions. Even if I don't care about the story in virtually any Bethesda game before, there were always characters that were fun and exploring the open world with them was effectively a story worth playing in and of itself. It made you want to learn about them and help them out with their personal quests and build your reputation with them. Not here. I don't care about any of these bitches. I just couldn't. It didn't help that they feel oddly more artificial than ever before. It might be the slightly higher fidelity mixed with the ancient engine tech that's at fault here, making everyone and everything sink further into the uncanny valley. And everything they say or do makes you feel like you're pulling the voice cord on an action figure. There's a snake in my boots! They still do the weird goodbye thing when you're talking to them. Goodbye. We're not saying goodbye. We're in the middle of a mission together. Bye. Goodbye isn't something you say to another person when you're just done talking about a specific subject. Hey, did you see that movie? Yeah. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Goodbye. Wait, but th this is my house. <sighs> uh, hello? Just about all the dialogue amounts to because Bethesda. It isn't particularly bad or cringy, but it isn't good either. Kind of like everything else in this game. It's just sort of there. It's like someone typed give me the blandest milk toast dialogue into chat GPT. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. And you just kind of wait for it to be done, or read ahead and skip as much as possible. Let me know if there's anything I can... Welcome to the Trade Authority. Uh -huh. If, however, you are here under... Mm -hmm. Then I'm afraid you'll find... It doesn't really make you want to talk to them. I don't remember practically any NPC's name unless I'm looking at them and can see their name. 
I couldn't say that about every character in past Bethesda games. I remember Lydia. I remember Piper. Everyone remembers them. I don't think you're gonna see much Sarah Morgan cosplay on OnlyFans, just saying. Unless it's Halloween. And yes, this is real, and it's on Bethesda's website. <laughs> nice try guys, but you're not Overwatch. The AI doesn't seem to be updated either. The first time I stepped out of the lodge with Sarah, I wasn't even sure if she was following me. She just kinda ran around like an idiot. All the walk and sit animations are the same start and stop stilted Bethesda animation we've seen for the last 15 to 20 years. And the increased fidelity of the newer machines makes it stand out more than ever. And everything looks and moves like plastic. Making it feel like you're in some kind of Fisher Price playset. It's like someone took an older game and just upped the base resolution and texture resolution. Reminiscent to playing 360 games in back compat. Which, I guess, takes us to the obligatory point in any Bethesda game where we have to talk about the creation engine. The same fucking, no it's not, new stop lying creation engine. The same point where Todd says it's improved and practically a new engine altogether, and it isn't. It's the same fucking engine. Same as last time, same as every time, because Bethesda. Honestly, at this point, I think the creation engine has some incriminating pictures of Todd or something. And while, as previously stated, it technically works, it does so at 30 FPS, at least on console. And even that isn't all that consistent. Even their shadows are still fucked. Almost no light source coming from the player casts shadows, even though it's 2023, because creation engine. To reiterate, <laughs> They have gotten at least one player in do shadow working though. See? It's your gun shadow. If you play third person and your light is on and hold your gun up, you get a gun shadow. That's one fucking player induced shadow after 20 years of engine tech development. Whoopity fucking do. Unless you switch to first person, <laughs> then it goes away. <laughs> Even though your light source hasn't changed. So, even that only works half the time. Because Bethesda. <sighs> they even managed to introduce some new bullshit this time around that I've never encountered before. You see, while this recorded footage looks more or less okay, other than my capture card makes everything so fucking dark, the motion you're seeing here is not how it looked when I actually played it on my TV. On my TV, it looked more like this, with a single blur step that made everything in the game judder in a way that just made it unpleasant to play. I even mistook it as bad motion blur at first and quickly discovered it wasn't, even turning off motion blur did nothing. And I was kind of stunned to see that it wasn't actually in the recorded footage when I looked at it afterward. You can't see it here. It looks fine here. It's only visible on the TV. What? How? I honestly don't know what it is other than because creation engine. I know some of you are saying, dude, you've just gotten too used to 60 FPS this gen. That's just what 30 FPS looks like. But no, no it isn't. I've played 30 FPS games on the same console on the same 120 hertz screen. None of them ever had this constant shutter. This is new bullshit because Bethesda. Then there's the general traversal and exploration, which is probably the low point of the whole game. Why is the gray location symbol still here after I finish that part of the mission? Competing with my brain for priority along with the blue mission symbol. Now I have to spend 15 fucking minutes running around until I realize there is indeed nothing left to do here and I need to move on to the blue shit. Why are all Bethesda location entrances and exits still the most confusing unintuitive shit ever? To reiterate, even your points of interest are a fucking nightmare. Is that a thing I need to pick up? Or is it an exit to the building I'm in just telling me there's stuff out in the world also? This was a basic problem with Fallout 4 as well, and just more evidence that Bethesda doesn't learn. And in the years since, has Bethesda learned? Of course not, because Bethesda. Basic traversal problems going back as far as Fallout 3 and maybe even Oblivion are still fucking here. Because motherfucker Bethesda. There's no map in town, or anywhere, other than this dumb map. That totally intuitive hunk of shit. No fucking map. I have spaceship technology, but no map technology? Ancient civilizations had map technology. But now these bitches, they couldn't even leave them by the pamphlets at the train station. 
I keep thinking I'm tracking a new mission target only to realize I'm back where I started at the last one. I'm trying to track targets on my navigation thingy because I don't have a map. This seems to be the place, but I can't find the thing. This game is turning me into Grandpa. You know when Grandpa tries to play a game and gets stuck in a hallway with like two exits and runs in circles while you roll your eyes wondering how we ever made it this far in life? That's how I felt the whole fucking time! Just trying to walk around the main city and find who I'm supposed to be talking to made me feel like a senile old man. Who's laughing now? <laughs> Goodbye. It Shut up! Even companies like FromSoft, who make good games without maps, understand that when you have an open world, you need a map. Look, Bloodborne, no map. Elden Ring, fucking map. Check out ship's inventory. Okay, I'm back in my ship. What inventory? What fucking inventory do you mean? What do you fucking want from me? Now the check ship's inventory questy marker is gone, but I didn't do anything. Ugh. Then I leave, and it says, check out ship's inventory system again. <laughs> fuh, fuh, fuck this. Okay, maybe this isn't a quest at all. But if it isn't, then why does it share the same symbols as quests just to confuse me? Because Bethesda. Because fucking Bethesda, that's why. You want me to check out this thing in the well? Okay, let's see how long it takes to randomly find how to actually fucking get there. <laughs> Okay, well that was a half hour wasted. Now I'm in the well, but with no indication of where to go or who to talk to. I literally have to just run around and talk to anyone with a name that isn't civilian and hope I find something relevant. Oh, did I say run? I meant intermittently jog for four seconds until my CO2 becomes a problem and I have to walk again. Whoa. Whoa. We haven't fun yet? Why can't I at least place markers on my non-map? My character already looks like an arrow pointing in the wrong direction. Just to confuse me. Why? 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 Even the fucking autosaves are the same. Which is to say, haven't been fixed. I just spent five minutes moving items around so I could fast travel. Now after I travel and die in a ship fight, I can't just start post fast travel. I have to spend another five minutes in my inventory management again and fast travel again and then manually quick save so I don't have to do it a fucking third time. How do you fuck that up, Bethesda? How did you never learn? Scanning. Ugh. There have been plenty of games, good games, when you had to scan something before. Even lots of stuff. Once! Once, and you done did it. Now you can do it many times for the same thing. Over and over. Because Bethesda. Woo. Yay. Woo. Remember doing this in Skyrim and Fallout? Oh wait. Yay, needless busy work. Yay, Bethesda. Don't rush the scan. If I have a scanner, why can't I find the fun? Scanning for fun. <laughs> There's a million game loops. Which is exactly what you'd want in a big open world-ish game that you actually want to play. The problem with all these loops is they're in a game I don't want to play. I could care less about any upgrade or customizable here. Because I don't want to be here. I don't care. I said something similar in my Rage 2 review, but honestly, this is on a whole other level. Sure, I didn't really care about Rage 2 as it felt like a big bland open board with disparate shit on it, but at least the combat was solid. The gunplay and movement were smooth and 60 motherfucking FPS on last gen's mid-gen consoles. The combat AI was serviceable. Years later and the combat, AI, and graphics are literally generations behind a last gen game. Because Bethesda. I play most every game on its hardest mode from the outset, even prior Bethesda games. I stopped doing that after the first handful of hours here, because everything turned into bullet sponges that didn't really care if you got a headshot or not. I mean, headshots still dealt more damage, but it felt less like someone was tailoring enemy actions and armor to harder difficulties, and more like someone just scaled numbers up lazily, which didn't really work with the clunky shooting mechanics that frankly just don't work without the VAT system from Fallout. The shooting is just shit, to the point where it didn't justify bothering with harder game difficulties. I just didn't care anymore, like everything else in this game. I do want to point out that there's a massive difference between I don't know and I don't care. 
Metro, at least the last gen version, was I don't know how much fun I'm having. Even though this is a really interesting world and I love the characters and the personal story and even then it would take at least 45 minutes for me to start getting a little bored. This is not I don't know. This is I don't care. Here it takes less than 45 seconds for me to know that I don't care. But you have to promise to keep it between us. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, I don't mean the school band. I mean a rock band. We called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> a ridiculous name, I know. But uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. Metro was very well made and deserving of a high score, and that tech and polish would be even more true now with the next-gen engine upgrades and ray tracing and 60 FPS, yada yada yada. Shit, I, I'd rather be playing the DLC for that than this current-gen bullshit. This game turned me into grandpa, not knowing where to go or what to do half the time, and I don't care anymore. I'm grandpa now. And Grandpa doesn't fucking care anymore. Grandpa wants to play Fallout 4 with zombie mods. Grandpa wants to defend his towns from the horde of undead with his army of Amazons. Grandpa wants to roam the wasteland with Piper in her scandalous anime costumes. No! No, I won't play fire. No, fuck Starfield. Get out. <laughs> Everything about this on paper is what I should want. Only I don't care. I'll put hundreds of hours into making my Animal Crossing dream home. But here, I could not possibly care less because I do not care about the game the home is in. And before you start saying these games aren't comparable, you know what is comparable? Yup, we're back here, bitches. And I didn't even start with an empty house. I had to build this one from scratch. And I loved every second of it. This I don't love. This is another icon on a map. Oh, wait. I know what you're saying. But dude, you only scratched the surface of this massive universe with limitless procedural potential. Doesn't matter. Because I don't care. You know what else had limitless procedural potential at launch? No Man's Sky. And I had about as much fun with that at launch as I'm having here. Only there's one major difference. That game was completely procedural, which was both a curse and a blessing in the long run. Because by updating it, or really building all the ingredients for the procedural universe post-launch, they eventually made a game that for many people is worth exploring and putting time into. The procedural aspects of Starfield are a garnish. A side quest. The main game is already here. They can update it with as many bells and whistles as they want, but there's only so much room to grow. No Man's Sky at launch was literally a seed, and all it did, even up to today, is grow. This might get an expansion, it might get additional DLCs and updates, but it is what it fucking is, and that's not gonna change. What you see is what you get, and I don't care about what I see, or what I got. If you're gonna make a game, you gotta pick what you are. Otherwise, you end up a messy soup of everything. And on paper, you could say Starfield has more separate elements than any other Bethesda game before. Exploration, combat, shipbuilding, ship combat, companions, base building, game loops galore! But are any of these disparate elements actually well made? Is the ancient engine tech powering all of these elements well made? Does any of this quantity have any actual quality that combines into anything that could be mistaken as fun? Jack of all trades, master of none. Did I get anywhere close to the end of the story? No. Will I ever get to the end of the story? No. Will I ever even watch a YouTube video explaining the story and ending? Who knows? Maybe if I'm drunk. And if you think that's not fair, well, I don't care about that shit either. Still doesn't excuse it. <sighs> so, what's the point? Starfield. The ultimate because Bethesda experience. It isn't good, but for once, it isn't necessarily broken, either. It exists. It just kinda is. It's technically a thing that exists. Now ask yourself, is that something you could say about Sony exclusives? About Nintendo exclusives? I mean, the best thing I could say about Starfield, other than it exists, is... It's not Redfall. And just to 
kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm upset with myself. Starfield. It's not Redfall. Wow. Fucking who? Kim Kardashian Award. Would I be lying and saying I'd love to be a loser? Because she exists. And even if she looks like plastic, at least she's not Kanye. You're such a freaky girl. I love it. I, I, I like Hitler. And Hitler has a lot of redeeming qualities. Like, who says that? Kim Kardashian. She's not Kanye. I don't like the word evil next to Nazis. I think we need to look at... <laughs> <laughs> but look, I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Goodbye.